Hey, welcome to Software Basics. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to auto refresh your browser on file changes. Now, for this, there are a couple of prerequisites that we will need to run through. And the first one on the list is getting NPM. And in order to do that, we will need to download Node. And this comes with NPM packaged together. And then next we'll need VS Code. This is the text editor that I'm using. And next we have XAMPP and this is the server for hosting your project. Now XAMPP comes with Apache, which is actually the server that we'll need. And then finally we will need Git Bash and in order to do that we'll need to download and install Git. So I'm not going to go through the installation for those setups. They're fairly straightforward. I will have a link to all of these in the description for you to download. All right, so the first thing we want to do is start up XAMPP. Now I already started it. So you just need to open up XAMPP and then you just need to actually start Apache. You don't need to worry about the rest, just Apache for now. So what we need to do is open up terminal on VS Code to do that. You can do control shift and then apostrophe. If you don't know the shortcut, you can just come to the top here and then click on new terminal. Now, once you do have bash installed, yours should look like this. If it doesn't, you might have to uh, select a default shell. When you click select default shell, it should come up at the top with all the options. You can see we have git bash there. So now what we need to do is install browser sync using npm. So I have the code here, so I'll just copy and paste. And it's just simply npm install dash g for global and browser dash sync. So we'll press enter. And this should take a couple of seconds. All right, so browser sync is installed. And I'm just going to clear this. And then the next thing we need to do once browser sync is installed is to now paste my custom bash code into the terminal. Now this is actually separated into three parts using the semicolon that you'll find at the end of each uh, code. So that's the, that's the first part. And then this is the second part. And then finally the last part. So basically the first part of my code uses the set command to delete any lines in your .bash RC file that contains the word browser dash sync. And then this part of the code basically creates an alias called live and live will start browser sync and proxy to your local host. In this case, that's our XAMPP htdocs directory. Browser sync is also then set up to monitor any changes to your file within your local host, its subdirectories and any directories beyond that. Hence this line of code right here. So this is what allows us to detect that. And then the last part is just to basically allow us to refresh that file so it picks up the new changes once we run the rest of the code. So let's take this and paste it into our terminal. So and then just press enter. Now you shouldn't see anything. This should just happen right here. So just a blank line. But now let's take a look at our bash RC file. So we'll do a VI and then tilde forward slash dot bash RC. And you can see it added our alias in there for us. So to get out of that escape colon and Q. So now let's type in live and press enter to start browser sync. Yeah, so basically browser sync does open up in your local host, which in this case, that's the location of our HT docs. So what you need to do is actually navigate to your project's location. In our case, it's in demo. And then this is the project right here. So we'll go into demo and then we'll go to KMP website initializer and you can now see the PHP page is shown and this will also take effect as well when we make any changes, which is the beauty of having browser sync. So if we take this index again and let's just change something here. So let's change this part 
and just put in something there. If I do Control S for save, you can see Browser Sync picked that up. So yeah, basically each time you save a file, you'll notice a message at the top right corner saying Browser Sync connected. Now, when it comes to CSS files, you won't actually see the message, but your changes will take immediate effect. So we're pretty much done. Uh, let's take a look at Browser Sync's UI. And this is right here. So if we do a control click, and you can see there's a lot of great features that this has. So taking a look at the local, you can open a new tab. And if you have loads of multiple tabs open, you can sync them all. As the name implies, it's pretty obvious what external is, but I will go through that in a second. And you can see it tells us we're proxying through localhost. And these are the current connections made. Now there's a lot of different things you can do. You can disable clicks, scrolls, all this kind of stuff. You can disable them all. There's lots of cool things that you can do. To be honest, I don't want to go through them all. You're just better off exploring. But if there is anything in here that you're curious about or have any questions about, just let me know in the comment section below. So yeah, before I finish things off, let's now go through what the external part is. External is honestly my favorite feature about browser sync. Basically, with that external IP address, we can now use this across our whole network. So because browser sync is running on local host and it does create an instance on our external local host. So that means any other devices that are connected to the same network, i.e. the same internet as this machine, they will also be able to access this. And that's really cool because when I do web development, I like to work on my mobile phone as well because I want to see how uh, the mobile version looks, for example, when I'm building the website. So in this case, I can actually demonstrate that. So this is actually my f mobile phone right beside me at this moment. It's just that I'm doing a screencast using MobyZin. So if I open my browser and I type in that external IP, now you will actually need the port number as well. So 3000. And if we go to this, you can see it's being detected by browser sync and it's now showing us uh, the local host for our Apache server. And if we navigate again to the project, you can see it also shows it up here. And if I was to take this and do a control save. It's detected on my mobile phone and on my desktop. And these are two completely different devices, but it's still detected. And you can see this is what I'm talking about. Like when I'm working on my PC, I want to be able to see the desktop version that I'm working on. And the mobile version is very different. And of course, because it's on an exact mobile device, I'm able to check this right there and then. And this is really perfect, especially when you are doing something for iOS and Android. So you can have your Android device open on this external IP and then your iOS device opened on the same external IP. And it's really, really handy. It's my favorite part about browser sync. But yeah, that pretty much concludes this video. I hope it helps you out. If you have any questions at all, please make sure to leave it down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this.